people, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have uh, a, a piece from San Martin. This is one of their more recent pieces and it comes in their new packaging. Now I've done quite a few San Martin reviews, you know, for example, uh, this fella here uh, or, you know, this other watch. They are very good pieces and, you know, I think for around the $250, $300 mark, they are absolutely the leaders but we'll take a look at what's in here and see whether it is just as good uh, spinability it's actually it's actually pretty darn good you know actually that's at least a 4 out of 5 but i'll tell you what rollability is actually also pretty good if you want a case that actually is able to roll so this is just plastic and it kind of opens up there and there is the watch i'll just show you what else is in here i'll just take this off so the cushion here and you know, obviously that's where the watch sits, but this lifts up and then you've got you know, warranty if you know you want to take a look at that. And then I've got the spare links as well as watch adjustment tools, which is kind of cool. You know, they've kind of fit that into the package here. All right, and that's how it comes together. So it's gonna put that aside and then show you guys this particular piece in closer detail. So guys, what I have here, of course, is the San Martin Black Bay 58 homage. It's a Tudor Black Bay 58 homage. There's no question uh, that this is what this is. SN008-G is the model number. And currently it's going for around the $300 mark. In Amazon, it's a bit more expensive. In AliExpress, around $300 mark. Sometimes it goes below that. So check out for sales if you want to, you know, kind of, if you don't mind waiting a little bit for it to go on sale. Uh, in terms of uh, how close it is to the Black Bay, just going to put it in uh, side by side here for you guys to see if you have any doubt. Uh, I don't, you know, that's really very much a Black Bay homage. Right, first up, let's talk about, as usual, the movement. So PT5000 is what this is, right? 2824 clone. You can get this, I think, in the SW200 version, which would up the price to over just over 400. USD, but this one is the PT5000 version, which is a 2824 clone. You know, in terms of specs, you can see uh, the usual specs down the left here. This one is a date movement, so unfortunately, it does have a ghost date position. Doesn't have a palpable date disc in there that I can feel, but there is a one and a two position, not just a pure, you know, time only movement. Hacking and manual winding, of course. Uh, rated accuracy, apparently they claim plus or minus 12. This one actually is doing within that. It's running about plus seven seconds per day in the roughly two weeks I've had this running because I've really quite enjoyed having this watch on the wrist, actually. Right, movement-wise, that's done. So let's talk about this case. So very much taken from the Tudor. So it's a 40 millimeter 316 L steel case. I have to say the bezel, uh, if you do measure it, it's actually, hopefully you can appreciate that, slightly wider than the case. It's 40.5 millimeter on the bezel. So the presence on the wrist is dominated by the bezel, which is slightly more than 40. 11.8 millimeter stick. I don't know what the Tudor is, but that's actually very, very pleasing that they've kept it to under 12 millimeters. 20 millimeter lugs, of course, for a watch of this size and the lug to lug distance, as you might expect, uh, you know, on this oyster style case is 48 millimeters between my thumbs there. Overall weight is probably as you might expect. It's actually 138 grams adjusted. So I've taken up, you know, whatever, three or four links there, 138 grams, substantial, but definitely not too heavy, I would say. Right, moving on to finishing. So we got circular brushing on the bezel, probably a little bit too fine to tell here, but it is circular brushing on the bezel, longitudinal brushing on the top surface of the lugs, as well as the sides of the case is longitudinal, uh, circular brushing on the bottom surface. Okay, and then a polished top bevel. So hopefully you can appreciate that there is a bevel there, that 45 degree bevel there that is a polished finish. Now I think that's mostly taken from Tudor, if not uh, directly, at least it's you know, partly at least inspired by Tudor cases. Uh, the case back, uh, unfortunately, is rather boring, right? It's that solid uh, oyster style case back, right? So solid screw down case back. It's got a screw down 
sign crown there and the water resistant they've gone for is 200 meters so you know don't be afraid to take this uh you know scuba diving i, I wouldn't hesitate either in looking at the quality of this piece i'm sure it would actually withstand that much if not even more in terms of water resistant testing moving on to the dial now so guys what we have here is a matte black dial so that's a matte finished dial it's got applied gilt logo so that's st martin logo as well as all 12 indices are uh, gilt finishing uh, and apply it there it's got gilt printing you know for the automatic 200 meter down the bottom there uh, as well as a chapter ring around the periphery all fairly classic tudor dial there nothing nothing very original i have to say because this is very much a heavy homage polished gold colored snowflake design hands of course as well as the you know that diamond for the second hand pip as you see on the tudor a green loom right this is what this has all 12 indices as well as all three hands and the bezel pip it's not a full loom bezel it does have a bezel pip loom and a shot in the dark right here of course for you guys to see how it glows okay moving on then so the the dial is surrounded by a very i have to say a very very good 120 click unidirectional dive style bezel with a polished yeah, hopefully you can see it's a polished ceramic insert and this bezel is excellent the feel is really really good so let's just hear it very fine that's 10 clicks there i'm not sure whether the, my camera is picking up the clicks there but it's very fine no back play and this bezel i have to say it feels like it belongs on the watch that you know can easily be about a thousand dollars that's how good i think uh, this bezel really is uh, on top of the dial uh, domed you know there's a there's a bevel edge on that sapphire crystal there but it's lightly domed very nicely done i have to say sapphire crystal on top of the dial there that's the case let's move on to the bracelet which again is no slouch right so this is a uh, you know five piece building so there's there's three you know oyster style and there's there's actually a side piece not sure if it, that's going to capture it but this is the rivet style bracelet right there's a side piece uh, as well as those three center pieces which are brush finish polish finish on the sides and then rivet uh, kind of fasteners so you do have to actually you know get a screw on one side as well as the other side to unscrew these rivet links to adjust the link so there's a little bit more work there but hey they've done it so well you know the, the quality the fit finish of these rivets are actually very impressive is so it's what i found uh, solid end links uh, of course you know this is what you're getting here and then uh, screw rivet adjustment which i've kind of uh, shown you there uh, it tapers from 20 to about 16.5 millimeters close to the clasp there and you've got this 18.5 millimeter wide push button release machine clasp absolutely solid with four points of micro adjustment so really really well done you know they've not shot cut the bracelet like some you know some other pieces may do you know at this price range so there you go that's the entire description let's just put it on for a reshot for you guys now so there we go the san martin black bay homage black bay 58 homage so 40 millimeter case 40.5 bezel just under 12 millimeter in terms of thickness okay that's how it looks like and that's how that really quite excellent bracelet looks like all right and then yeah i think it carries well on my 17 centimeter wrist right 48 millimeter lug to lug width there it carries just okay uh, that's how i feel about kind of oyster watches you know submariner style watches of this size okay what have i enjoyed about this look i think this really as i said is the price leader at 300 dollars. i don't think you can actually find anything better let me know if you think you can find something better but i think this is the price leader at 300 dollars. san martin are the top of the pile i mean thinking about what you get is sapphire it's got the ceramic insert for the bezel it's got a 2824 you know etta clone there so high beat movement at 28800 beats per minute getting a screw length very well machined bracelet a machine class and a full 200 meter water resistant which really in this case feels like it will pass iso 6425 if you put it up to there uh, in terms of the finishing 
great quality, you know, absolutely, you know, top class for three hundred dollars. You know, even up to five hundred dollars, I think this will go toe to toe anything at that price range. Uh, a very very well done bracelet, as I've told you. You know, the the rivet finishing is really well done, and the bezel, as I've said, that belongs on a thousand dollar watch, I reckon. And of course, in terms of looks, well, look, no credit to San Martin there, but it does completely take this from the BB58, right? It's got the good looks of that very, very high demand, very popular Tudor model. Any weaknesses? Any weaknesses at all? Well, look, I think this is really a very nearly perfect watch. Um, if they could put a movement that doesn't have a ghost state, I think that would lift it just that bit because some people absolutely don't like ghost state positions and I, I understand that. I don't mind it, but hey, some people have a problem with that. Uh, if they put in a dive extension, I think that would also lift it a bit, uh, you know, and overall, um, I guess the only other thing I would say they should have taken advantage of is put something on the back, you know, that's just plain Rolex Tudor boring. Uh, I don't know why they don't do something about that, but you know, I think San Martin should have taken the chance to do something about that case back. Give us a piece of art and that would also lift it. Uh, undeniably, this is an homage piece. So if you have a problem with homage, well, this is not the watch. You know, you, you wouldn't look at watches like this, but if you don't mind that it's an homage and you want to try out what a BB58 looks like, this is just about as good as you can get anything under 500. I think this is, this is the, the class leader. So guys, there you go. That's my thoughts on the San Martin SN008G. Let's flip it around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that quick fire review. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. Always look forward to the discussion from my viewers. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.